We appreciate it. We're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we will uh, have our next guest. It's Beyond Reality Radio. You're listening to Beyond Reality Radio with Jason Hawes and J.P. Johnson. Now, a lot of people have wanted to be an author, but just couldn't get that big break. Do you have a story to tell? Do you think you have what it takes to be an author? Would you like to get paid for what you write? Well, nowadays, more and more people are traveling less with the big, bulky books. Large bookstore companies have made their own ebook readers in hopes of staying ahead of this curve. People can now carry a library of many, many books, all in the palm of their hands, opening a world of possibilities, especially for new authors. Many have always wanted to be an author, but could never get the big break they needed to make it happen. Well, this is where the Authors Club comes in. Whether you're writing poetry, fiction, nonfiction, science fiction, adult books, or just about anything else, the Authors Club is for you. All you have to do is take that first step. Visit theauthorsclub.net. That's theauthorsclub.net. Find out what the next steps are for you to become an author. Johnson here along with Jason Hawes as we uh, scroll through what is a very fast, quickly passing three-hour program. We're already over two-thirds of the way through here, Jay, and uh, another Monday night is almost wrapped up. We did have somebody in the chat room ask when this program is on. Right now we're on Monday nights from 9 to midnight, hey, but hopefully soon more yeah, than that. Right? Yeah, actually we're working on uh, setting it up where <clears throat> the show will be seven days a week. Um, we'll have somebody posting it on the weekends for us, and Jim and I will be going, uh, you know, the Monday through Thursday or the Monday through Friday um, right now. So, and the, the main thing with that is, because uh, we'll be branching out to radio stations all across the, uh, the globe, and uh, we're just getting into a set format, so just trying to work the kinks out right now with this before uh, taking it to the next level. Yeah, and we're excited to do that because once we do that, obviously there are a lot of people that are turning to the Internet and apps and smartphones to listen to programs, but there's still a lot of people that listen in their cars or listen just on radio in general, and we, we look forward to being part of that that audience um, as well very, very soon. Absolutely. It should be so, fun. Yeah, it should be. Now we're going to go to the phone lines, bring our next guest in, and I'm going to bring Nicole Beauchamp in to the program. Welcome to Beyond Reality Radio. And I probably have been hesitating saying your last name, Nicole, because I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, it's Beauchamp. Beauchamp. Yes. Got it. Well, welcome to the program, Nicole Beauchamp. It's a pleasure to have you on. Oh, thank you so much. I feel so honored to be able to talk to both of you. Well, Welcome. thank you for saying that. Um, you, you've said it... The reason we're even talking here tonight is because, obviously, you've done a lot of work in the paranormal. You've been investigating for quite some time. But you sent an article in to Tamps Para Magazine, um, which I'm the editor-publisher of. And you um, were talking about why you, as a paranormal inve investigator, um, well, why don't you explain exactly what it was? Yeah, um, well, I wrote an article um, because I kept getting questions by, you know, friends and coworkers and and they kept saying to me, um, so have you seen a ghost? Uh, are ghosts real? You know, and right. they kept prompting me with these questions. So, um, you know, one day I got a, another one of those questions, and I was just like, this is silly. Like, I think people need to really understand, you know, why it is um, that I do what I do and, and why other paranormal investigators do what they do. And I thought maybe if I wrote up an article... Um, I could answer a lot of their questions. Right. Now, that article will be appearing in the upcoming issue of Tamps Para Magazine. And, Jason, that's got to be a common uh, common thing for investigators, people who are in the, involved in the paranormal field, is to get questions like that, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it's definitely a common thing. Now, you, you've, you've been investigating down in Panama City uh, Beach for how long? Well, I have been investigating um, in Michigan. I just moved to Panama City Beach uh, six months ago-ish, but I've um, I've been investigating in Michigan for almost seven years now. 
Um, actually, it's been longer, but with my current group, um, we're going on almost seven years now. Okay, and where in Michigan were you? Um, well, I'm originally from Bay City, Michigan, and um, I moved to Lansing, uh, but we have investigators on our team that are um, all over the state of Michigan. Um, they don't live in just one general area, um, but now that I'm in Florida, uh, you know, we pride ourselves on being a nationwide group, so um, if we find a location we want to go to, uh, much like your group, you know, we'll just meet up at that location and go from there. Yeah, and that's, that's the best of all the investigators from no matter where you are, especially in New England. It makes it easy because I can be in three different states in, in 20 minutes, depending on which way I go. And, uh, you know, Steve's constantly meeting me at different locations as well as uh, the TAPS home team members and everything else. But, but now where you're located in this Panama City Beach, Florida, you're, that's, on the, uh, that's on the western side, right? That's the Gulf area? Yeah. It's the uh, northwest uh, portion of Florida, and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because um, the news kind of uh, noticed me and, I guess, honed into um, what my hobby is because this is such a touristy area, and, you know, it's all about, like, the beach and drinking and relaxing, and, and you don't often hear about, um, you know, the paranormal side of things around this area. Um, but the self is just so rich with history and and culture that it's silly not to uh, talk about you know the possibilities of haunting in this in this area because it's you know the, the self like I said has such a rich history. So well, and there's um, a lot there's a lot of reports over there, um, and I know a lot. There's different theories too on the the western side because Pensacola and everything um, where people. First off, there's shipwrecks and everything else. Um, you got the, the haunted lighthouse up where the uh, the blue angels fly, because we investigated up that way. Uh, but I know some of the theories also in that area is because the sand is all white, because mainly it's it's, quar- it's a quartz crystal that's all crushed down. If uh, That's the same in Panama City, correct? Yeah. Okay, and with that, and anybody who's never been there, it's, it's the funniest thing if you're not from there because you walk and it squeaks every time you walk on the sand. Um, but I know a lot of theories are that the, they tend to have higher paranormal activity down there due to that. Yeah, that's very interesting. I've actually never heard that. I've heard about the limestone and everything, yeah. but I, I've never heard about the sand. That's well, you think quartz crystal, quartz crystal is notorious for holding energy. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Look at that. Now I just did some research for you, and I live in New England. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, Nicole, tell us why you why you started investigating and how you started the Tri City Ghost Hunter Society. Um, it's a funny story. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are big fans of the show Ghost Hunters, myself included. Um, and I know a lot of teams have started off that way. Um, but I have had an interest in the paranormal since I was literally like a tiny little child, and I would take my little friends up to the attic in my parents' home, and I would literally go hunt with them. I have drawings that I did when I was like a little tiny child, um, you know, with crayons that are of little girls ghost hunting, and they're saying, bonjour, ghost, (laughs) and I don't even know, like, where that where that friends came from or anything, but, um, you know, that's just, I just feel like it's something that's ingrained in me, and then, you know, as I started getting older, then I, um, noticed that my parents also kind of had an interest in it as well, um, so they kind of cultured my interest in it, and then I discovered Ghost Hunters on TV, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, people really can, um, go out and do this, I didn't even know that was, like, a possible thing, um, so, you know, I just gathered up uh, my family and some of my close friends, and, and we decided uh, that we wanted to go out and uh, not only investigate the paranormal, but uh, preserve history for generations to come, and we all had a passion for it, and, and I really believe, you know, uh, forming the Tri-City Ghost Hunter Society was not only beneficial, uh, you know, to basically foster my passions and and the passions of my other teammates, but to um, be able to do some good in the world and uh, kind of change the stigma that's attached to paranormal investigating. Well, I'll I'll be honest. You you just made me... uh, I I just 
earned a lot of respect for you just from hearing you say pres preserving the history and so forth. That, that means so much. It really does, especially when it comes down to investigating. A lot of people are just going in, just you know, trying to do an investigation and get out, but they're not looking into the history. They're not paying attention to it. They're not that respecting sometimes, it. Sometimes they disrespect it. Sometimes they oh, disrespect it. Absolutely, absolutely. But the history, most of the time, will help you solve the case, whether it's paranormal or not. And, and that's the, you know, that's the thing that was very important to me. Um, and I was a child, much as I love the paranormal, I love this just as much. I am a crazy, uh, titanic fanatic. I collect architect member of media. I have gone to the museum you know, 300 times. And so I just, I love history, and I really value the old buildings, and I value, um, you know, being able to, you hear the stories of the people that experience this history, and that is just as equal to important to me as anything paranormal. Yeah, hey, Nicole, are you next to your computer or something? I'm hearing an echo all of a sudden. Actually, I hear it in mine, too. Hmm, interesting. Oh, no, I'm pretty yeah. right. okay. Well, yeah, in, in the history, the history is a very important thing, uh, especially in my house. Samantha, my oldest daughter, is, is a history major, and... Uh, and my whole family, it's, uh, I make my kids, I, I, don't ma I don't even make them, I, I walk in the living room, they've got the history channel on, that's just the way we are here, we're just huge history buffs here. Right, yeah, I, I am too, I love the history channel. Yeah, you're definitely, you're fading in and out, so I'm not sure what, what's going on, if it's a cell phone issue or what, but, uh, alright, so, what's, uh, what's some good haunts that you've hit down there in, in Panama, Panama City, sir? Well, I'm still very interested in finding places. Honestly, I haven't been here long enough to really settle in all places. Okay. Um, but I'm very interested to publish in Augustine Lighthouse, of course. I've heard many reports. I've gotten, um, after the article went public about um, haunted Panama City, um, I've got many uh, emails from different people in the area about places I, I got, but I heard the Sims apartments. Not sure where those are located, but apparently they're really haunted. So um, I would love to check that, but I've heard about a couple of theaters now. Um, definitely going to look more to that. And then um, I'm very interested in this whole Robert's Doc thing. Um, I know that's not really like a location, but I am very interested in, in the concept of first subjects and whatnot. Yeah. Well, and yeah, definitely, if you get a chance, check out the lighthouse. We, we had a great experience while we were there. Um, well, first off, to checking the place out, and we were lucky enough to uh, meet a bunch of the Blue Angels guys who are huge fans of the show, and they, they literally did a flyby of the lighthouse while we were investigating it at one point. And one of the nights we were there, I thought the thing was going to fall over. Because that's how close they came. The whole thing started shaking, <laughs> and it was one of the scariest things I think I've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah, it's just insane. Hey, hey, Nicole, one of the things you talk about is parrot unity. What do you mean by that, and why is it important? Um. Well, uh, you know, back when was I just always serious. I very curious. Um, paranormal best, but. When I was just getting started, you know, I had, I had part to play, but I also, at the same time, I was very much adamant about being like, I'm going to get a better piece of evidence than you. And I know, you know, other people have done that as well. However, I went on one very serious investigation and networked with uh, several different other chicken groups at the time. And we were together, and we were sharing, comparing techniques, comparing ideas. And that these were, these were, some of these people were doing this for 20 years longer than I have been doing it. Um, that being said, you know, I changed my tune real quick. And I am so much for now learning from people that are much more experienced than myself. I am for you know, sharing evidence with not only other groups, but, but sharing it with the community and not being, there is definitely 
goats in this photo, or there is definitely, you know, weird voice on some audio clip. I really value now, and I really find not only, like I said, um, other investigators, but community feedback on my findings, and and I really still, you know, if we all together for the towards the same goal, um, really to a mountain, um, and it really strikes the feet. Right, and you, um, have you experienced the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a weird echo in my ear, but have you experienced the, uh, the competition between groups firsthand? I mean, you said that you were involved in some investigations, but did, have you felt that personally? Yes, very early on, um, it, it did seem like a lot of the teams that I was surrounding myself with, and I'm not going to lie, myself included, um, that there was kind of a competition going on as to who can get the best evidence, you know, who can get the most stuff, who can get the most places, who can get in the best, you know, magazines. But it, it, it's not about that anymore. And, you know, it's, it really, it really took um, working with people that have been doing it a lot longer to open my eyes. And I have seen drastic changes in the community in the Michigan Paranormal community and other communities, you know, nationwide. Um, because people now are so much more open to work with one another. And I do feel like, you know, the show like Ghost Hunters really uh, has a very positive influence on that. I mean, you see, um, you see the patch team going out on investigations with people that are, uh, you know, amateur ghost hunters and then other professionals like, like Josh Heath or um, Barry Fitzgerald. Uh, so, yeah, we. Uh, anyway, I, I look at everybody as an amateur ghost hunter. To be honest with you, amateur investigators, and uh, we. I've never had a, a competition issue. It's crazy with the amount of people out there now who will sell their soul for thirty minutes of TV time, which is just—it's—it's it's a sad thing that you really don't need especially this day and age where production companies are out trying to find the most uh, people, the people who are going to have the, the craziest relationships together, uh, the most drama, and, and all that. It's just that's not what it's about. And, and that's why I love this book hunter so much, because I feel like it really feels in a positive way. And, you know... Uh, People have asked me many times my opinion on, you know, do I feel that the shows are helping or hindering the field? And uh, it's both the same, you know. Some shows, you know, do show that attention to the person, doing it for all the wrong reasons, but then you do have shows, like your own show, um, where people are helping people and they're working with one another and they're collaborating and they're networking and they're, you know, growing the field. And that's that's really the reason you can do it is because you love it, you have a passion for it, and you're seeking your own personal answers. Yeah, and Nicole, you clearly do that, and um, we're kind of out of time here, but I want to give you a chance because I know that you lecture, um, you talk, you uh, you investigate, you do all these things. If someone wanted to get a hold of you or figure out where you're going to be, how would they do that? Um, they can go ahead and email me at each at Michigan at gmail.com and I would have to lecture at any university or library I'm very happy to share my, my knowledge of the paranormal um, and share some evidence and to put people's minds at ease that's great and also your is going to be in Tabs Parent Magazine at the upcoming issue and we appreciate you submitting that Oh, no problem. I really appreciate you putting it in there and, and you know, getting the word out. Great. Great. Well, I'm not sure. So, all right. Yeah, you're back, Jimmy. There you are. I don't know what it is. Hey, Nicole, thanks so much for joining us on the program, um, and we hope to have you back sometime. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Okay. Nicole Beauchamp, uh, a lot of experience, uh, a great group, uh, Tri-City Ghost Hunter Society. 
Um, you can reach her at tcghs.michigan at gmail.com. All right, so, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll uh, open up the phone lines and take some calls. I know there's some people who said they were trying to get through, and it was busy, but uh, well, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you tonight. You're listening to Beyond Reality Radio. You're listening to Beyond Reality Radio. 